Good morning. You are back for another episode of finding an exceptional entrepreneur and a phenomenal company that is going to turn into a unicorn. And that is what we believe because we at Expert Dojo have already invested in this company. So the investors who are here listening to this podcast, you are doing so because you know that we are not promoters. We are investors. We are merely talking with pride about why we have invested in a company that we believe is going to grow to a phenomenal level. And the company that we're going to chat to today, Sober Sidekick, just an incredible company. I, they have an unbelievable mission in the world, as do many of our companies in the healthcare, in the Excel, healthcare Accelerator program. However, what's even more phenomenal is their speed of growth. You are going to see this as we go through the podcast, but I have never seen a company grow at such a rate that if you look at their bar chart for growth, it looks like the sheer face of a mountain cliff. Now, plenty of investors out there are used to seeing that after you input, invest money in, or at least the promise of that in the projections. But what very few of you are used to seeing it is while the company is trading today. So great company, great founder. Chris, welcome to the podcast. Thanks so much for having me, Brian. Excited okay. to be here. Okay, buddy. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk a little bit about the idea of this as we go through the hero's journey. And that means that we take you through from those difficult, dark times at the beginning when you were setting up the company, the challenges that you were facing, the hard things, whether it's the technology, the team, whatever else it was that was pushing you back. And then we're going to go through that hero life cycle to when you suddenly saw those first sparks of light with the company, and then all the way through to today and the future as you see this growing to be a billion dollar company. So take us right back to the beginning when you started off Sober Sidekick together with your teammates. What was the genesis of the idea? And maybe just, just paint us a little bit of color into those times. Yeah, yeah. So as, as you know, Brian, um, this is a deeply personal mission to me. And at that point in time, I was just getting started in my own recovery journey. And, you know, I was investing in myself, investing in my recovery, building a new perspective on life. And I asked myself, there's got to be more that can be built for people like me or the 22 other million Americans who are chronically battling addiction. Because the reason I, I stayed in as dark of a spot as I did personally for as many years as I did is because I believed for too long that the thoughts in my head were too dark, too scary to share with another human being. So how can we expedite that human to human sharing? Um, how can we generate real human to human connections? And how can we guarantee it and do it in a way that no one has done it before? Um, and it literally just popped into my head um, a Saturday evening in December, and I went home and I, I started building it. And yeah, thirty look, days late, thirty days later, we launched an MVP. So okay, and and this is where I want to get to because. There's two things which are just phenomenal here. The first one is the number that you mentioned that I want to draw a line under. I want to put it in bold. I want to increase the font to 72 from 12 where it was. And that is the number 22 million people in America battling addiction today, which really means the number is more like 60 to 70 million because of course when somebody's battling addiction their entire family is battling addiction so mm -hmm. we're saying one in four one in five americans are directly being affected by addiction today yeah yeah a hundred percent there's the families the children the workforce all it affects all aspects of life um they're there's no, and you know, it's such a taboo topic, so much stigma associated with it, where, you know, you might feel like it's a niche market just because people are afraid to talk about it, but it is ever, ever so prevalent, ever so, um, such a force. And it's not a market, which is something 
that lasts for a year or two years or three years. It's for mm-hmm. the rest of people's lives, right? And I would also argue that mm-hmm. the market builds such deep loyalty for any organization, any institution, any person that actually helps that other person through what is a very difficult and dark time that they're going through. Yeah, yeah. I mean, scientifically, if someone reaches the chronic level of addiction and, and substance abuse, you know, they're, they're forever going to need to remove themselves from that substance. It's almost like an allergy. You know, once you're allergic to something, you can't put it in you without your body having a reaction. So it really is a lifelong journey for anyone who is in recovery. And that's why, you know, within Sober Sidekick, we, we treat the trust we build with our members, like as the bottom line, you know, trust is our most important currency, because we know that by being there for people at their lowest, that, that, that's where we build these lifelong connections, these lifelong partnerships with our members. Um, so yeah, hundred percent, you're, you're dead on there. And as you so eloquently said at the beginning, because you've gone through this journey yourself, you truly understand everybody else who's going on the journey. And if we're saying one in five people in America, then that really means one in five people in the world. Like th- this is this is the furthest thing in the world away from a niche market. But as investors, you love where we're going to take this going forward because it starts with addiction, which is a huge percentage of people that will stay with the company forever. And then it moves to all levels of the world because the genius of this, even though Chris very humbly says, we thought of it, we built it together. We pulled together a couple of phenomenal people in the team. And then we had the first MVP out in a month. It's the genius of what they've created and how different it is to the standard model, which is why they've created the stickiness that they have and the user growth, which just seems so exponential. And that is they took something which is a centralized model and they have made it decentralized. What do I mean by that? I mean that if you are in a place of addiction, you have your family who are around you, many of which you're not able to speak with, and you have friends who are around you, many of which you are not able to speak with because they're either part of the life that you're trying to get out of or they don't understand the life that you're in right now. So it's extremely difficult to solve this from a centralized place. But from a decentralized place, by being able to pull on people all over the world, suddenly you have access to hundreds of millions of individuals who are available in a second. Because at 2 o'clock in the morning over in the U.S., it's okay because it's 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning in Ireland. And then in Australia, it's another time. So you suddenly have this Mm -hmm. huge network of people who not only understand you, but are also available to you and are the furthest place in the world away from judging you. They just want you to be in a better place. Talk to me about your mindset and your colleagues' mindset as you were building this. And did it grow to what you initially imagined it would be or in a different way? Yeah, yeah. So when I launched the MVP, um, January, 2019, I honestly had no expectations. Um, I wanted to test out the concept of the empathy algorithm, that decentralized support that you brought up because it's a new concept, never seen it anywhere else. Um, never seen anyone try it before. And, um, so no expectations wasn't necessarily going into this from a business mindset. It was more a project in in our minds at that point in time. And, you know, no budget, no cash, nothing tied to it. But when we saw a random person, day, day one, a random person in Texas find the app without any connection to us, any marketing, support a random person in Florida without, once again, a person who had no ties to us, no marketing, no nothing. That's what we, that was all I needed to see to know that this is something worth building on top of because we were able to initiate a conversation where both people were giving each other quality advice with no connection to one another. 
And then we just doubled down on it and built on it and optimized, um, you know, so the expectation, there was no expectation to uh, begin with, but now the expectation is we aren't going to stop until there's 22 million epic comeback stories. And then we just know that addiction is our early adapters. And then we're, we're going to create decentralized communities in high impact areas, high impact, high urgency areas. So um, for us, addiction was just the highest possible impact we could make with the maximum urgency. You know, when you look at the opioid epidemic, when you look at the fact that nothing bills health insurance more than, uh, there's only one thing that bills health insurance more than addiction treatment and it's cancer. You look at $43 billion industry and it's a $43 billion industry off of only serving 3 million Americans. Imagine what would happen if we served six, like six out of seven Americans. You know, imagine what would happen if the industry was serving 22 million Americans instead of 3 million Americans. You know, I mean, there's an example that I like when it comes to destigmatization. Um, and that's when Viagra and Cialis were the only players in the erectile dysfunction space. Everyone thought the market size was 10 billion. And then when Roman entered, made things streamlined, made them online, made them a little bit less stigma, eliminated fear factors of going to the doctor and looking at, looking someone in the eye and saying you can't get it up anymore. You know, when they, when they you know, de got rid of that stigma, the market size went from 10 billion to 40 billion overnight. And, the, and the rest, because what they did, they moved it away from you are broken, you have a flaw in your character, you'll never be the same man again. And they moved it to you're a better man than all of the other men out there if you use this product. And that's what made it so powerful. It, it turned it into something to be proud of. And many mm -hmm. people who are going through addiction, you know, I've never been directly touched with it myself, but with my family and with people I know, like on a huge way indirectly. And I find people going through recovery, some of the bravest people on the planet, because they're fighting. It, it's David and Goliath is just huge and everywhere mm -hmm. around them. So it's it, it really is it's like such on a on a saving the world level. It's such an unbelievably important thing that is never spoken about. The only thing that I really struggled with, even when you and I first started speaking, was how mm -hmm. did this get so broken in the first place? Like how could there be so many systems that in many ways, not only do they not help those people who are going through recovery, but they actually push them back into addiction again in the first place, if not directly, certainly indirectly. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a a loaded a loaded question. Um, you know, and I'll I'll do my best to avoid the blame game, but yeah. you know, you you have one thing I've recognized when it comes to my own backstory is substance abuse was my solution to the problem you know it was my solution to coping it was my solution with insecurities confusion all these different things and um you know for people battling addiction if they go to a treatment center or a rehab or a medical detox they're getting a break from their go-to solution and they're getting it you know cleansed out of their system they're getting detoxed but if they don't build a new uh if if they don't build a new solution in their life if they don't build a new way to cope with the ups and downs of being human they will return to that substance of choice and, you know, the treatment industry knows this, um, just unfortunately, it doesn't penalize them. There's nothing that penalizes them for, you know, their, their client only get, 
getting three months out of rehab, returning multiple, multiple times. And, you know, part of what we're recognizing, and obviously there's people who capitalize off of it as any business does when the incentives are in the wrong places. But one thing we recognize is that there's no data really for these healthcare organizations to optimize for. You know, everyone knows that long-term recovery is the goal, but where are you getting the data to test and validate your approach? And, you know, with addiction being such a stigmatized issue, like where is, where is that data coming anywhere? You know, I, I mean, there's, there's funeral records for people who've overdosed and died, you know, there's different things like that, but what are the success metrics that we're optimizing for? And that's where Sober Psychic brings so much value because engaging people at a human level, building loyalty to the point where you are a life partner, with, like Sober Psychic members are life partners with the community. And as they engage, and as they move forward in life, and as they track their success on Sober Sidekick, as they produce user-generated content, um, you know, and, and you know, noting their sentiment, noting how they're doing, all these different things, now we have something that we can optimize for. Now we have something that we can begin to force the substance abuse industry to optimize for. What happens when we go to Blue Cross Blue Shield and we say, here's our data. These are the indicators as far as what is leading towards long-term success and what is not. And we can then begin to force the industry to, you know, work to truly serve because right now, you know, serving its own bottom line is unfortunately leading to people who can't get through life with out going to rehab five times a year, yeah. you know? So how do you, how, like, how do we give these people legs to walk on, you know, instead of, you know, the crippling nature that, you know, has become the status quo. It's status quo for people with addiction to be crippled in the U S and like I said, addiction is such an incredibly strong place to start but actually, with how complicated life has become today, everybody mm -hmm. needs support. Everybody. And we're going to touch on that a little bit later. Here's what I love about what you've done. Um, two things. Number one, if we talk about most companies, it's so hard to start. Like It's so hard to build a platform. It's so hard to get users. It's so hard to get people engaged. And it seems to me, the more I know you, that... You don't face, or you didn't, and you don't face all of those early startup challenges that other entrepreneurs faced. I mean, you've said to me many times your challenges were faced in your preparation for this, which is during your recovery. But actually starting the company, you came in with a phenomenal team. I've met your team and I've worked with your team. You've got a blockbuster team of folks, which we'll dig into in a second. You also have built a really good solution that folks are going for, and you have customers who love you. And the customers who love you is the piece I want to stick on and talk about for a sec, because it literally is the holy grail of all companies, including ours and anybody else. Like if we're trying to find our perfect users, we have to go to market, we have to use testimonials, then they'll come in, and we're just investing. Like imagine if we were actually selling a product, and then we have to rinse and repeat over and over and over and over and over again. Your users, your paid users, are actually your team members. It's, it's the one time ever where they're going to say to you, how many people work for you, Chris? And you're going to say, right now, there's 5,700,000 and X amount of people who are under my employment. Oh, and by the way, of those 5 million plus people, they're also our customers as well. Because you're creating a loyal fan base who feel like 
they represent the Sober Sidekick brand. And you're going to build it up from where you are today to continue going there in the future where those people are always there with you. So it means you don't have to hire a fully centralized team of people who will have a level of, conv of conviction to where you're going to, but nowhere near the conviction of the people on the platform. It's truly genius. And was that what you designed to build or did it just evolve to this place? Yeah, no, that was before before a single line of code was written that was the intention to um to make this all about peer-to-peer -peer support about empowering people to support others you know because if you empower one person to support another person then they begin to rinse and repeat in their own life we have members who start their day by getting on sober sidekick and giving support to other people because they've seen the value it does for their own life. They've seen how the rest of their day plays out when they start it by giving support to someone else. You know, they've seen what happens when you pay it forward. You know, we all personally, I'm sure, Brian, you personally know the value of paying it forward when it came to your own success, you know, and, you know, this is something, but we're implementing it with technology showing people how to pay it forward on their own, seeing that reward come in in the form of more reinforcement back to them, more connection, because the opposite of addiction is connection. And, you know, it, that's really why, you know, like the, and, and it leads to behavioral change, you know, and we have, you know, countless, countless, just loads of data when it comes to behavioral change within our members behavioral change. And the coolest thing is behavioral change that is very often initiated within the first session within our app. You know, we 20% of our downloads will write a comment within their first session on a platform where they know nobody, you know, so it's just amazing, you know, the level of connection we're able to create. And, you know, I mean, I don't have a KPI for this, but the number of times members have reached out to me and told me that sober sidekick has saved their life. You know, like the most, the last time I heard it, the most specific way I heard it, it was about a week ago. And the woman said, I would not be alive if it weren't for sober sidekick were her exact words, Incredible. you know? So it's that intangible value that we're creating that I wish there was a KPI for it. Um, you know, I think there is actually, by the way, I think there is, I think there, I, I actually, on the front of your deck, you should have lives saved, mm. measured, right? Because as people are saying this to you, that's the reason you live. Like when you have your, when you've reached to the end of your life and you've lived out your days and you've done everything that you said that you were going to do and they write on your tombstone. Chris was here. He saved 812,000 lives during his lifetime. I'll take that. I'll take that over. His conversion from inquiry to prospect was 42%. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're building is really powerful. I'm also going to push, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to push back with a compliment on one other area. Expert Dojo, when we first started, the name of our company was Pay It Forward Labs, would you believe? It was initially set out with a very paid-forward mindset, and we still maintain that mindset. But during my journey, I realized that the Pay It Forward formula is deeply flawed. And it's deeply flawed because it relies on very few good people and then generally a bunch of jerks who sit around it who do nothing to help anyone else because they are takers and they don't do mm. anything to support a circular economy, a circular community, a, a fractionalized, a decentralized group of people which has to function as a whole or it falls apart individually. So I moved very much to the concept of circle it forward. And circle it forward doesn't mean that, Chris, you help me, so I have to help you. But it does mean that I'm not a jerk, right? It means that you help me. 
So at some stage in the future, I should help someone, right? I should just do something which is the minimum of benefit for another human being and not for myself. And that's how you create this beautiful center circle of life whereby everybody's helping everybody else on the platform. That's what you've got. That's what you've built within Sober Sidekick, this network where people help each other. And the world has never needed this more. And I'm going off piste for a moment here because normally we're going to talk about the tough times and, and move to, but I really want to focus on the massive thing that you are doing, not just the benefit that you have to the world. And you think about like how difficult is it to build a network where you can build up hundreds of thousands and then millions of people bring them on a platform, have them all supporting each other, and then having them want that platform to be, to grow and become better and everything else. Then combine that with a world where social media is poisonous, disruptive, mm -hmm. horrible, destructive. On every level, it is bad. If we look at what's in social media today, there's no support, there's no help, there's judgmental attitudes. There is demeaning endeavors to try and hurt other people on the platforms. There's showcasing people who are doing things that are embarrassing or bad to them for the enjoyment and the merriment of the people who are watching it. We need a social... Actually, I'm not even going to say it. I'll let you say it. Like, What are we going to call this, Chris? A social meaningful platform. Yeah, baby. A social meaningful platform, for the love of God. Is there a parent out there who doesn't want that for their kids to be on? Is there a spouse out there who doesn't want their friends and their partners and everybody to be on a platform where finally, in this time of just horrible destruction in the world, there's something beautiful in the middle of it that flowers and comes out? So I love what you're doing. Let's, And I think everybody gets the idea. Look, for I normally say at this time, if you're an investor... And if you like what you see, then you should reach out to Chris and you should have a chat with them. I'll go further here. If you're an investor and you don't see the huge impact this is making on the world, God bless you. You're in a different podcast and you need to get your life together. But even if you are not looking to invest here, even if you say, I don't know this space, I don't know how it works. We want you to help. We want you to circle it forward. This platform is going to build. And let me start by saying how fast it's grown. I talked at the beginning about this sheer rock face of growth that it's gone through. And this platform has gone from like zero to 100,000 users in a tiny period of time. Tell us how long it took you, Chris. And especially the last three or four months. Yeah, so it took, it took two years to get us our first 10,000 users. But over the course of the last 12 months, we've gone from 10,000 to now 96 or 97,000 members. We're going to hit 100,000 members any day now. We're coming close. And think about that an explosive growth. So it took us that amount of time to go from 10,000 users to 100,000 engaged users. How long is it going to take us to go from 100,000 engaged users to a million users? One million users. 18 months. 18 months. We are there. That is a million people giving support to each other on the planet. Think of the impact here. And remember... Addiction is the beachhead. That's where we start. They've taken on the most difficult market you can go after. But beyond that, it can go anywhere. We can be looking at suicide. We can be looking at help for mental instability. We can look for help with relationships. Like literally, there is nothing too easy or too hard for a decentralized network of caring people to make sure that they make a difference. Take us into how you see this growth going forward and the vision of where side, Sober Sidekick is going to go. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, we're within our platform, we've essentially turned empathy into a currency. Beautiful. Empathy into a currency. And it, it's because we just believe so strongly that, you know, with more empathy, less people die, less people waste their lives less people have lives that were never lived you know I, i've i've seen people who were close to me die from addiction um but what i can say is equally sad if not more sad is a life that was never lived you mm -hmm. know getting to your deathbed and being like 
what if, what if I had like tried, what if I had, you know, had the courage to chase the path that I always wanted to chase, you know? So it's those lives that are never lived, which there's almost, it's, there's no way to track it, but it's so real. Um, you know, so when it comes to the vision for Sober Sidekick, as I mentioned before, addiction is the most high impact, um, high urgency space. And, you know, then we'll, we'll strategically go after other communities um, who are also high impact, high urgency, and, you know, anywhere from, you know, suicide, veterans, um, you know, even in fintech, you know, underserved financial, uh, underserved communities when it comes to financials and supporting each other and building community. Because the what Sober Sidekick is, is, is it builds community from the most root ground level you possibly can up. You know, it's not top down, it's bottom up. Um, you know, and work our way to, you know, a just massive like when you look at just social media today as a whole when it comes to mainstream there's just nothing that is intentional there's nothing that is intentional when it comes to building people up supporting circling it forward you know generating comeback stories you know seeing people at their most human vulnerable level because we all know like my no, nobody is 100% authentic on mainstream social media. It's all a projection of myself talking to a projection of you. And, you know, there's so many studies that have come out on Facebook and other platforms about what it does to your mind, the more you spend, the more you spend time there, you know, so our, our differentiator here when it comes to when we make that mainstream push not if, but when, when we make that mainstream push, our differentiator is everything we have done from day one has been intentional and it's been intentional and it has led to positive behavioral change. Like can, Brian, can you think of any social media platform that can say their platform leads to positive behavioral no, change? No, 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 of course not. Of course no one not. could even make, come close to no, making No, and by that. the way, it's, but you nailed it though. Social meaningful versus social media. The whole idea of social media, media is not to bring any form of positive change. It's to amplify. Mm -hmm. That's all. It's to amplify. And the things, because we're all insecure in ourselves, the things we amplify are the things that are not true. And then the things that are not true are the things that get put out there. So it becomes this entire world which is built on things that we can never attain or be. Right by by building a social meaning for you know where I wanted to go, Chris. Like I'm so ex I'm so I was gonna say you know I was thinking earlier on man I'm so jealous of you. Like I feel I have great meaning in what I do, but I also feel my meaning is like there compared to your meaning, and I strive for like that awesome meaning in the world. And I'm so like pleased and proud and happy and joyful for you that you got to this place. Not just that you can save the world and you can do really good things, but you can build such an incredible financial powerhouse that has the ability to direct that change in a really meaningful way. You know what I personally want to do? Like, I want you to have a meaningful coin. Like, so not or an empathy coin, right? So rather than an ETH, it would be an EMPTH. <laughs> yeah. right and we'll have a coin but we'll do that once we get to a million users so all of you guys out there who are in blockchain who are in nfts you want stories i'm sorry your story is not justin bieber giving a free vip pass and calling it an nft the story is someone's life that they turn from a place of being lost into a place of meaning like that's an nft worth having that's an nft that you're going to want to keep for yourself forever right I'm a token stories within a social economy whereby you have millions of people who are all paying it forward, everybody who wakes up every day to drive that economy, building that meaningfulness, using empathy as a currency, benefiting from that currency by being able to cash in that currency for things that you friggin' deserve. Like investors, get involved with this one. It's important. There is 20 
to 60 million lost Americans who are left behind. The current centralized system will never, ever be able to save them. You are touched by these people. They are your mom, your dad, your kids, your aunties, your uncles, your best friends. They're the people who are in school with you who need help. They are you. So for all of those people who are listening, I implore you, get engaged, connect with Chris, help with Chris, join the platform, spread the word about the platform. With you or without you all, this is going to a million users within the next 18 months. But it would sure as heck be nicer if it was with you. If you're looking to invest your dollars, we didn't invest, by the way, because it's a social meaningful platform. We invested because it's going to be a billion dollar company in one of the most beautifully socially meaningful ways ways that the earth and the universe has ever pushed our direction and you should look at it the same way so chris i'll leave you with the last 30 seconds to share with everybody why this is so important for the world where you're going to take it and how everybody can contact you yeah yeah so why this is so important for the world um you know starting with the most basic level, which is the audience we're currently serving, those 22 million Americans who are essentially forgotten about, or if they aren't forgotten about, they're used and abused by the current substance abuse industry. And, you know, just a, a place where there's very, very little hope, you know, and we have a, a real, real way to change that. And we do that by empowering people to help people. And it's not just something we say, no, it's something that happens every single time on the platform. You know, no one has ever gone on our platform and not been helped by someone else after they've reached out, you know? So it's not something we say, it's something we mathematically can prove 100% of the time in the tens of thousands of posts, everyone got the help that they need. And that is just something that, you know, is so absolutely necessary because the opposite of addiction is connection. But who needs connection? Everyone. Everyone. You know, it's so not what, what can this grow to, Chris? Like, how many users? If we're at a million users in the next 18 months, where are we in two, five years? Two to five years, you know, in three, in three to four years, we're going to start to make that mainstream push um we're beginning to do some work with universities this year um on the research side but we're going we're going to make that mainstream push and you know the world just needs it more and more as we go along the world just gets increasingly toxic but we're going to make that mainstream push you know and we can have a billion dollar industry if we only focused on addiction or we can have a billion dollar business if we only focused on addiction. But our goal isn't just financials, it's impact, you know? Um, so three to five years from now, we're making a massive, massive push, tens of millions of users um, feeding yep. into <laughs> hundreds of millions. Of I users. love it. That's it, right? That's where we want to leave everyone. You mm -hmm. are going to engage with a platform that will have over 100 million users. That's it. If you believe that's going to be successful and make an impact on the world, connect with Chris. If you don't, you're on the wrong podcast. Chris, how can everybody contact you? So email is chris at sobersidekick.com. You can always Go to SoberSidekick.com and you'll find the contact us information there. But Chris at SoberSidekick.com is the easiest way to contact me. Thank you, my friend. Congratulations on the journey. Thank you for everything you are doing for American and our global population. I appreciate you. I appreciate being able to invest into you. And I know all of the listeners do as well. Thank you, buddy. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me.